Challenger Center, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor ISS for a voice check. Endeavor ISS, this is Jim Scobie Rogers at the Challenger Center for Space Science Education in Alexandria, Virginia, and our Challenger Learning Centers across the nation. How do you hear me? Jim, we hear you loud and clear, and we are absolutely thrilled to be talking with you and all of the Challenger Centers this morning. Good morning from International Space Station and Space Shuttle Endeavor. Good morning from International Space Station and Space Shuttle Endeavor. Congratulations to the entire Endeavour crew. Thank you for the downlink to Challenger Center. Barb, we have been standing by waiting for your signal from space for 21 years. These students are a go to ask you the questions in space. How do you feel going into space for the first time? Well, going in space for the first time is absolutely wonderful, and I have a feeling that going in space for the hundredth time is probably just as wonderful. I think the biggest surprise for me, um, well, the floating is absolutely fantastic, the, the work is wonderful, and I think the biggest surprise I had was the very first day when we got into space, I felt like I was upside down the entire time, and, and now it doesn't matter whether you're upside down or right side up. Um, you can be upside down in one module, like this. Sorry, Al, and you still feel like you're right side up. What is it like going on a spacewalk? We've got Dave Williams and Rick Mastrocki on Clay Anderson who've been doing a spacewalk for our walk out here on this particular mission. I can only tell you about things I've done in training for a spacewalk out in the pool, but I can tell you it's a little different. It's uh, you, you use your hands like you use your feet now to get around, and you, uh, you learn how to you know, work in zero gravity. Even though know, you think it's easy to, with things being weightless, uh, almost the opposite is true. Everything needs to be tied down or else it floats away, including yourself. So um, it means you've got to really take a lot of mental effort to think about how you want to keep things strapped down. The other side of that is you can work in any orientation, just like Bob was working upside down here inside the space station. You can work upside down outside the space station on the shuttle just as easily. Do you have any questions for Bob? on the space station and do you ever do space walk? Okay, well, Al is going to give you a demonstration of how we sleep. We've got these sleeping bags here. and Al is crawling into our sleeping bag, you can really sleep in any position here, right side up, upside down, it doesn't matter. But the main thing is you want to keep from floating around so that you don't hit your head into anything and either hurt yourself or These sleeping bags, it's just kind of like a sleeping bag liner, and it has clips on it, and you can clip it anywhere you want. Okay, and Al can zip it up if he wants to as well. And some, some of us like to sleep with a little bit of music, so we'll put on our iPods. So you want to talk a little bit about sleep walking and sleep dreaming? I like sleep walking in space. I can see we're tied down pretty well. Uh, dreaming is just like normal dreaming. Uh, normal question I get from everybody is, do you dream about floating in space? And the few dreams I remember having have all been about being on the ground. To the space station, there's no, gra no gravity in space. Okay, uh, 
Um, one thing we wanted to ask you is, do you mean keep ourselves attached, or do you mean uh, keep the shuttle attached to the space station? Could you clarify that for us, please? How do you keep the shuttle, how do you, how do you stay attached? How do you keep the shuttle attached? Okay, how we keep the, the space shuttle attached to the space station is when, and just a moment please. Okay, we have pieces of equipment on both the station and the shuttle and it has latches on it. We actually clasp it together or latch it together. Um, to zoom this in so you can see how it hands a little bit better. So the two pieces actually have latches that latch it together. However, any object has a gravitational force on another object, and so technically you would think that the space station and the shuttle could, could stick together, but because of orbital mechanics, the way, uh, the way orbital mechanics work, depending on where you are in position with each other, they can tend to pull apart, so we do need to cross them together. But we have a question for you. If we take these two objects right here, our microphone and this little remote controller, and leave them standing side by side or floating side by side, would they eventually attract to each and attach to each other, or at least get closer to each other? There's a lot of air, air current floating around right now, and we don't have enough time. It'd take a long time before they finally attract it to each other. If an Olympic-sized swimming pool could be built in space, would you be able to swim faster on Earth or in space? And where would you burn the most calories? question. Of course, the big thing about a pool is you swim on the surface of a pool, and how do you swim on the surface of the water when there's water everywhere? You can see the big drop of water coming out. How would you swim through that? It'd be like swimming actually through the water. The neat thing about a pool is just like here in space, you're effectively weightless. You're neutrally buoyant inside of a pool, so you get kind of the same thing. So I imagine you'd be about the same speed uh, no matter which one you, no matter which uh, medium you swam through. My question to you, if you were going to design a pool for being in weight, weightless in space, how would you go about doing it? <laughs> you tell us. We don't know if you could see all that water floating around, but the biggest challenge, of course, is once you started moving your arms and legs, is you would have water spraying everywhere. So we would love for you folks to figure out how, how can we design a swimming pool for, for space, for microgravity. How would you compare flying in space to flying on an airplane?